greater sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my thought, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me and for the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Here we A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given to me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand, and before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. 
yet all good things come together in her company and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him 
to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your mother and your father. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him, and said to him, you are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell and he went away sad for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at these words. So Jesus again said in reply, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, there are masses when the scripture readings line up, when you can just look down the barrel of them and see one single unified vision about what it means to be human. And this is one of those masses, which puts me in mind of a story. It was my 14th year as a South Jersey guy and a Boy Scout, I was blessed by my parents to go on what's called a Boy Scout Jamboree. Anybody here been on a Boy Scout Jamboree? A great mission trip opportunity? We flew from South Jersey where we thought the sun rose and set over the Atlantic Ocean and all the beaches to the magnificent Mount Rainier area of Seattle, Washington. 
Our first night, we were put up in the concrete bunker dorms of University of Washington. No air conditioning. The next morning, we woke up a bit jet lagged to look out the window to have one of the dorm leaders say, guys, wake up, Rainier is out. What's that mean? So we all climbed up on our cots and looked out those windows across Lake Washington, across Puget Sound, 40 miles to the south, and saw shimmering there, literally floating above the clouds, Mount Rainier. Rainier was out. Because, we learned later, later, it usually wasn't. Because of the Pacific maritime layer of fog, it's very rare that you get to see Mount Rainier from 40 miles away at Lake Washington. It's a special moment of atmospherics. The humidity, the barometer, the condensation, the optics are just right for the human eye to travel that far and focus. Puts me in mind again of these readings today, perfectly lined up to ask ourselves this question, what to you is wisdom? Number two, where does it come from? And number three, what is the point of wisdom? Because, brothers and sisters, the past four popes have taught us consistently that the increasingly confused optics, call it, of the secular culture, increasingly materialistic, increasingly insisting that human beings are just matter in motion, there is nothing supernatural. There is no other source of wisdom other than your own. Make it up as you go along. What is wisdom in the biblical worldview? It is the first gift of the Holy Spirit. It allows us to literally focus and see God's loving plan for our lives. And when we see our light in his light, then the rest of our life, our values, our priorities, our commitments, our relationships, our money, our pleasure, our power, all of that is prioritized in right focus. In his light, we see light. In our light, not so much. Detaching from the world makes us love the things that God loves, as God loves them. And then we are able to live in the light of love. Great contemporary Catholic philosopher, I've mentioned him before, Charles Taylor's monumental analysis of the optics of post-modernity called a secular age. He says there is now a new worldview the postmodern worldview, which he juxtaposes with the sacramental worldview of the biblical imagination. In the postmodern worldview, things have meaning only to the extent that they touch and awaken a feeling in us. Do you feel me? Do you sense what I sense? Do you like what I like? As opposed to the sacramental worldview, which means meanings are not only in our feelings, but in the things themselves, an objective gift given us. Today, we are all locked into this postmodern worldview that Taylor proposes, especially those of us who suffer, suffer from the digital God, as Benedict XVI called cyberspace, lost in our screen our addiction to media, buffered from reality, says Charles Taylor. And I make no pretense that I am not one of those. My screen time goes up every single week, I hate to say. We are all distracted from distraction by distraction, as T.S. Eliot says. We are TikToked, Instagrammed, Twittered away from God's light. My brothers and sisters, wisdom is not in the postmodern worldview as it proposes 
found only in science, the University of Cincinnati adds, in science is hope. That's partially true from the biblical sacramental worldview. But the biblical worldview proposes in God's light, science is a tool, a powerful analytical tool, but not the only tool to discover reality. There is also the reality found through logic, philosophy, intuition, impressions, hunches, and both of those tools are required to be wisdom incarnate in our lives. And when we have spiritual wisdom, our first reading shows, when we align our optics to God's vision, then we are integrated at last, as our first reading reminds us. Beyond all gold and silver, Compared to all gold and silver, seeing light in God's light, seeing light in wisdom, all those gifts are like sand. They are nothing compared to the proper alignment of vision in your life. I loved her and all good things, all the pleasures of the earth, God-given money, pleasure, power, accumulations, honor, Nothing wrong with them as long as they are prioritized in God's light. Then comes the rich young ruler in Mark's gospel today, again echoing the first reading. He knows the goods of gold and silver, which the Irish Catholic mystics U2 sang an epic song about gold and silver and how it never satisfies. He knew it didn't satisfy, which is precisely what drove him to Jesus, saying, Lord, I have kept all the commandments my entire life. I am blessed with money, pleasure, power, honor, and they are not enough. He was looking for something more, something deeper, something he could not see in the material dimension of all that accumulation. And brothers and sisters, here is the final refraction and focus of these scriptures. Jesus, comma, looking at him, comma, loved him. Which is to say, the only light in which God looks at me and you and the rich young ruler and all of us is only through the prism of love. Why? Because God himself does not point to love he is love. He is the source, the summit. He is the complete origin of love, which is why St. Paul says, when you walk in love, you walk in God. The choice is ours. And so Jesus, looking in love at this rich young ruler who's blinded by the material dimension only optics, says, you lack one thing. What would that be? It was to give himself away and let go of that earthly material focus. Sell what you have, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and then follow me. And then Mark's searing focus continues. He wants us to focus from Jesus' eye and optic of love to the rich young ruler's face, and in that face to see yours and mine. Because when he heard that, his face fell. He went away sad because he was clinging to his many possessions. Notice, brothers and sisters, Jesus did not walk it back. He didn't say to the rich young ruler who was depressed because of what he was clutching to, what he was focusing in life. He didn't say, oh, I didn't mean today. I didn't mean literally. Whenever you get around to it, you might want to focus on God's vision for your life. Which is why he says to the incredulous disciples how hard it is to see life in God's life. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. What was he talking about? 
in the temple portico in Jerusalem. There are gateways into the sacred space of the temple. One of the gateways is called the eye of the needle because it is so low, like an underpass here in railroaded Cincinnati, that anyone riding a camel, a symbol of pleasure and power, would have to dismount to get in to the sacred aligned space of worship. Brothers and sisters, that's us. We need to dismount from all the things that are carrying us in the wrong direction into a buffered, material-only way of seeing reality. Jesus, he said, it is easier for the camel to enter through that needle than it is for us to do this apart from God's grace. So on this day, when the readings align perfectly, when the maritime haze of materialism can dissipate long enough, don't miss the opportunity. What are you focusing on in life and why? Who made the promises for you to focus on that? And how is that going for you? In his light, we see light. And when we are rightly integrated, we can find joy in the loving optics of God, looking at you and me and all of us. Jesus, help us trust in your gaze. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's now bring before the Lord our prayers and hopes and desires as we confess for us, for our parish family, For our church and our Holy Father, Pope Francis, as they continue in the faithfulness of their mission, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for the, end of, for the end of abortion during this 40 days for life and for the support of all local pregnancy centers. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all nations and people, may the peace of Christ turn all swords into plowshares, resulting in healing and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. For all who bear financial responsibility for family, may God's providence free them from any anxiety. We pray to the Lord. Lord for anyone in this faith community living through a time of strife, may the Holy Spirit bring peace and unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Zoe Dyla, who will be united today with the Holy Church in the sacrament of baptism following this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For those who have passed from this life into the next, especially Barry Hour, may they be swiftly ushered into the internal banquet of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for Jim Belmont, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord.
is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom of God. each other a sign of peace.